next topic we're looking at is features of online systems probably going to be by far the easiest section so i'm going to quickly list them and go through some of the benefits and drawbacks of each one all right first we have retail financial services education and training news and information entertainment and leisure or leisure however you say it productivity and booking systems so retail, we know what retail is, it's simply how we buy stuff. So it's gonna be e-commerce websites or online auctions. So e-commerce websites, simply a website where you can buy stuff. And I think it's safe to say at this stage that um, Amazon is by far the most popular e-commerce website in the entire Western world, all right? So the benefits of this, there is very good competition. Because of Amazon, because of stores like eBay, Amazon, Curry's Online, other stores on the high street, they have really stiff competition. So whereas before in, let's say, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, they could charge whatever they wanted because it was so difficult for us normal people to get hold of stuff. Now, as you can see here, I've been looking for monitors, right? And when I type in 24-inch monitor, it just brings up everything everywhere. I don't actually have to go to one specific store and look in multiple stores and then say, oh, this price is a bit too high. This just shows me everything I want in one place. That's the benefit of it. Um, the targeted marketing is going to be better as well. As you guys hopefully know, there's something called cookies. And the cookies are one way of websites to track you. So when I actually look for um, monitors on this website, Amazon, if I go to some other random website, it will still show me um, monitors on, let's say, the, the, the advert side of that website because it, I, it knows I've looked for that stuff before. As I said before, I don't need to go to a shop anymore. Before, when I was younger, I used to have to go to Curry's, then PC World, then I used to have to, have to find some random shop in London that does PC components, whereas nowadays, I log into Amazon from my phone or eBay from my phone, my laptop, my tablet, whatever the case is, and I can find or search for hundreds of devices in one go. I can narrow it down by, um, by price, by location, by, by quality, by brand. And I don't even have to leave my house. So it's going to save me a lot of money by doing that as well. So like everything else, there is good and there will inherently be bad. One of the really horrible things about buying stuff online, I buy, as I've said, a lot of computer components. I build computers, fix them um, for people and myself. And I'm constantly getting emails from companies I've bought, bought from before. So even though the deals are really good, even though I did not sign up to receive emails, these companies, because they have access to your email, they simply think it's okay to just send you whatever junk they want. So that's a negative. It's not the end of the world. And at least it's electronic so I can get rid of it easily. It's not wasting paper. So in my opinion, the benefits outweigh the negatives. So I still do it. However, for some people, especially for a company, a business that has... Hundreds of, hundreds of emails coming in and they need to sift through those emails daily to try and get clients. It can become a nuisance. Another thing that's good to mention is how things might not be regulated. I've bought stuff from eBay, Alibaba before and it's come and it's nothing like what the image showed. It doesn't work and returning it can be an issue at times. Websites like Amazon, you don't really have that problem anymore. But back in the but not back in it before early early days of amazon it used to be quite tricky to return stuff nowadays once you click return and drop it off at the drop off point that's good you're good to go so for this one the benefits the negatives mainly the negatives of this one are going to be those nuisance emails and adverts that they keep sending you they text you they call you sometimes and it's also going to be the fact that it's not as well regulated whereas amazon has to regulate uh, well has to abide by uk rules and regulations a company like eBay where they sell stuff from China to here or Alibaba where it's coming from China as well. It's not as well regulated. So if stuff doesn't work as it should, yeah, it's tough luck. If there are not any safety regulations in place for the, for the amount of power it uses and something happens, tough luck. The next one we have financial services. And I think the most obvious one is going to be online banking and online trading. I'm only going to show the online banking option here. And this is Monzo, an online only bank so there's no branch anywhere in the world everything is managed online so i think this is quite self-explanatory again the benefits i haven't been inside of a bank for years unless i needed to send some stupid amounts of money i've always 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 simply logged onto my phone put the person or the company's details in transferred money in that way and they've been paid that's how i've always done it the convenience of this is super handy because 
Imagine I'm in the Caribbean, I need to pay a bill and I'm not here to make the phone calls or going to the bank as necessary. I can simply log into my phone because I've got internet there and pay the bill. So very, very easy. One thing we do have to be careful of though is that not all services are genuine. So for people that buy cryptocurrencies so or Bitcoin, Ethereum, so on and so forth, there have been online systems, let's call them crypto exchanges, right? And they've gone up overnight. People have really dived in and said, oh, this is really good. We're buying everything that we want to buy. And then a week or a couple of days later or however long later, they just completely vanish with everyone's money and there's no way to trace it. So not everything is genuine. You have to be very careful and there's no 100% way of knowing. For example, here in, the, here in the UK, we have something called the Financial Conduct Authority where they check out an institution's practices and make sure that they're legit, make sure that they have the, the right insurances in place so if something were to happen, we as the normal people can get our money back. Security breaches, that's one of the main things. Over the years, I'm sure you guys have heard of bank accounts being hacked, people's social media being hacked, and as a result of that, they can get into people's bank account details. They can get into people's bank accounts. It's, it, it is what it says on the tin. Um, unauthorized access is where someone does not have permission to get into a system or your system but they found a way to do it. It could be via social engineering, it could be via hacking, it could be they would stole your phone and logged in. Okay, so next we have education and training. And as you can see here, this website I'm on is called Coursera. They offer online courses, makes it super really, really, really convenient. And you can learn from home in your own time. Many of us adults, we have to do some form of online training at some point. And it just being online and we, us, us being able to access it from our phones, makes it really convenient. Now, some of you guys as students, you might see this as a negative in some cases because during lockdown in the last two years, it's been very hard for you guys to concentrate because being in a classroom is so much what you're used to. When that does not happen, I think it threw a bit of a spanner in the works for most people. One of the reasons being that there might not have been that st structure set up originally, so it would have been slightly difficult for some teachers and even some students to actually quickly move over to learning online every day, all day. One of the benefits of it again is that you can actually learn anything so on this coursera website there are it courses as you can see here there are business courses english courses public policy courses you can access anything from this one website now if i wanted to do all these courses i would have to probably sign up to multiple colleges in my area multiple universities and finish each one one at a time Whereas online, I can do multiple courses at a time. I can say, okay, Monday is going to be that one, Tuesday that one, Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth. All right, next we have news and information. And I think the biggest news website in the UK is probably BBC News or BBC in general. So what we get from this, we get traffic reports, weather reports, news articles in general. Here we have Reese Mogg in new Brexit row as PM reshuffles team. It gives us an update. And this was updated, as we can see, four hours ago. Now, I'm not a person that actually likes to watch live TV, so I actually read all the news I want, and it's very specific to me. So I read about tech, some politics here and there, general events going on around the world, and I prefer to just have it read to me or read it myself rather than watching the news every day. Benefits of this, extremely, extremely convenient again. The information is most likely going to be up to date because it's so easy to push information to a website compared to setting up a camera crew, getting ready, getting makeup. They can simply push an article. Um, it does help you to plan. So BBC has a weather as well. They have a weather section on the website, which can tell me, okay, do I need to have an umbrella today? Do I need to drive tomorrow because it's going to be raining? Or can I just take the bus or my bike? I have my, as I've said, I have my articles personalized. So I like tech, I like movies, I like sci-fi, I like anime. So I have those things come up on my newsfeed. So whenever there's anything new on any of those topics, that's not an ex um, exhaustive topic list. But whenever there's anything new on those topics, it would just present it to me when I need it. Is news always reliable? 100% no. And it being an online service now, it can even be more reliable than, more unreliable, sorry, than before. Because it's so easy for someone to push information out. For example, imagine if a hacker got access to the BBC website, the BBC service. They could push out whatever information that they wanted. And because it's the BBC, most people here in the UK would be inclined to believe it. Right? So we have to check if something is valid. It does take time. It does take research. However, if we are going to use a BBC article, we then have to do research around the article. So I have to double check 
who Rees Mogg is. I have to double check if Rees Mogg is an, actually an MP. I have to double check what Brexit is. I have to double check what Rees Mogg's role in Brexit is, right? We don't just get the information and run with it. We have to do some extra research in most cases. There is a lot of information on this website, right? If I were watching the news on TV, so if I were watching BBC News on TV, it would be one article after the next, after the next, and it would be in succession. It would make sense because it would be in a logical order, right? So if something happened this morning at, at 4 a.m., I would get the 4 a.m. article first and so on and so forth. But if you can, let's see if we have any timelines here. Okay, look, this one was four hours ago, but it's at the very top. This one was 27 minutes ago. This one was three hours ago, two hours, three hours. They're all over the place. There's a lot of information here. And that's a drawback. For some people, it is. For some people, it isn't. For some people who can sift through information really quickly, this is a benefit. But for the average person, for my grandmother, for my mom, who, who just wants the quick articles that, on stuff that they're interested in, this might not be the best idea because every single text you see here that turns blue, that's a different article. So on this one page here, we have, I'm just going to say 50 to 100 different articles. It's an overload of information for some people. That could be a drawback. Next, we have entertainment and leisure or leisure. We have streaming websites like this and we have online gaming. Two things I dive into 100% totally. I'm a big gamer and I love streaming stuff. I don't like watching live TV. It has become, in my opinion, for us, where we have unlimited data for on our um, Wi-Fi at home, on our broadband at home, sorry. It's redundant watching live TV because you, you're you watching stuff you don't need to watch. There are no adverts when I watch Netflix. There are no adverts when I watch some of these shows, right? So Netflix is one of the biggest streaming services in, in the entire world. So is Amazon. So that's two things there. Those are two things there. Uh, we have so many TV shows, music, movies that I would never have found by just watching normal TV because 90% of them don't show on the same station all the time. You, you just have to randomly catch it somewhere. Whereas Netflix gives you an entire list of movies, TV shows, and it describes what it's about. So I can go in and say, hmm, this is sci-fi. It's about blue aliens. All right, that's something I'm interested in because of Mass Effect. Let's go in and watch that one, right? So we have a lot of information here. Because I'm a big gamer, I have friends in the Caribbean, friends in America, friends in Africa, friends in Asia, where we actually play games online. Not very often, maybe once or twice a month, we meet up online, four or five of us, and we just play some random game. We can communicate via video in the game and via voice as well, which is really handy. And it's a way for us to be social. Even though we've left uni for um, so many years ago, we still keep in contact. And that's one of the things that we have in common that we still like to do. Now, as good as these online services are, they're very hard to monitor. There, there is a lot out there that's not relevant or not um, safe for young children or young adults to watch. So we have to have certain parental locks or certain uh, security locks in place to ensure that young people cannot get to it easily. However, as many of you might know, it's very easy to get around these locks because in most cases, the only thing they ask you is your date of birth. So if you are a basic human being and you can do arithmetic, you can work out what 18 to 21 ages should be and you can lie. So it's not always the best. Next we have productivity. So productivity is quite simple. We have cloud storage, we have cloud computing, and we have stuff like um, emails, video conferencing, voice chats. It's just how do we get work done on the internet? Um, I think I, I only put Office here just because I think it's the one that most people will know, Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And it's they have an online version which we can use on their website completely free. It's so easy to collaborate with people. That's one of the main things there. So for example, when I'm working on my documents at work, I can simply share that document. So give someone a link in an email or a text message. They can click on into that document. And if I said, okay, person A, you need to work on section A. Person B, you need to work on section B and I'll do section C. We can all be typing in that same document at the same time. A benefit of this is that we can always check up on each, each other's work. And if, I, if, if person B needs some information from person A to continue, we can collaborate right there. We, we can have a message window at the left-hand side and we can be talking to each other while doing the work. And if we're in different time zones, it doesn't matter because if person A has done their part at 9 a.m., I can jump in at 10 a.m. and do my part. I won't speak for others, but I can speak for myself when I say that working from home has been a benefit to me. Many people have said to me that, not having that person to speak to in the office um, or just having that human interaction has kind of made work a bit more depressing. I don't have that issue. 
I prefer to work alone. I prefer to work by myself. I am a lot more efficient. However, this is something that does happen. Another thing that could potentially happen is because, again, this is an online service and you're trying to be productive online, if you do not have access to the internet, this goes for every single service on this list, but I think more so for this one. If you do not have access to the internet, if your internet isn't working, if your broadband is down, there's no way for you to work. Some companies only use cloud services. Some companies only use cloud storage and cloud computing. So if there's no internet, no work can get done. They're losing money. Customers aren't coming in because the website might be down. So there are some negatives there. Now, lastly, we have booking system. This is quite obvious as to why this is a benefit. Again, I'm on a website. I can search for all the deals of every flight going to the Caribbean in one go rather than going to individual websites. I want to get to Birmingham. I can check all the trains, all the buses, all the cabs in one go. I can use Google Maps now to do that, I believe, right? Benefit, convenient, and there's no need for me to travel to actually make a booking to travel. I can do it from the benefit, the comfort of my house. Um, a company is going to save a lot of money by doing this, even though the websites might cost a lot to set up initially and maybe to maintain as well. Think about the fact that a website can accommodate for hundreds, possibly thousands of people using the website at the same time to book tickets, to book flights. Whereas having a single office in central London can only accommodate X amount of people. Websites, I'm going to use the word unlimited loosely here because it's never going to be unlimited, but it can scale if it needs to. Most websites, if you need a thousand people, there's more resources in the background to make use of. Here, the main downside is not everyone is going to have the internet. Not everyone is going to know how to use these services. They are relatively new and older people who I'm guessing have more money and they can and want to travel. This is probably not going to be the best for them. So they are going to be stuck using the phones, um, going into the shops to make these bookings. And just overall, everything on this list without internet access, none of them are possible. So if you don't have the internet, these services, obviously they're online services, so they won't be accessible to you.